So this idea kind of doubles as, what if the Nightwings never went to the volcanic island? Basically, instead of fleeing to the island after Darkstalker's little, let's say, fiasco, the Nightwings instead target what they consider to be the weakest tribe. Anyways, hello and welcome back to another What If. I'm pretty excited to tackle this one, I have a pretty fun idea for it, and it follows Glory, one of my favorite characters to write, so let's jump in. The Nightwings took over the rainforest almost 2,000 years ago, Glory's mother liked to tell her. It was her favorite story. Glory and Jambu must have heard it a thousand times growing up. The Nightwings took our home because we were weak. Now we have any home we want because we are the strongest. But nobody lives in the rainforest, Glory always pointed out. Her mother didn't like it when she pointed that out. She claimed they didn't need to. Glory just thought it was because they couldn't take it back because the Nightwings would see them coming. Literally. In the future. Or in their minds. As Glory got older, she gave up her ideas about the rainforest. The Nightwings were too powerful. She couldn't just attack them, even if she had help. There were 72 Rainwings alive and accounted for in all of Pyria. Glory knew six of them. They were scattered across the continent, blending in with the other tribes to stay hidden and alive. Even if Glory could find all of them, they had no queen. Most Rainwings were just trying to survive, hiding among other tribes and doing their best not to be found. Everyone knew Rainwings were still around somewhere, but everyone was also scared of them. When Glory was seven, the Skywing village they were hiding in found out her mother was a Rainwing. They had turned on her, Glory and Glory's brother Jambu. Before she could do anything, her mother had been dying already. The last thing Glory's mother told her was to run and take her brother with her. Jambu was soft-hearted and too kind. Glory had no such qualms. She had sprayed the Skywing about to slash her in the face with her venom, grabbed her brother, and flown. The Skywings had given chase. They had not caught Glory or her brother. After that, Glory knew it had changed her. Jambu told her that all the time. But they had to make a living somehow, and everyone knows what Rainwings are best at. For the last thousand years, Rainwings have ranked among the greatest assassins and spies in Pyrene history. She dragged Jambu with her to the Scorpion Den and signed a contract with Fulcher. Glory assassinated her first dragon three weeks later. From there, she only got better. She started traveling around the continent. Anyone who had a contract found ways to find her. It was safest to keep moving, though. Glory was making enemies. And Jambu was not a fighter. Glory took impossible jobs. She always delivered. Nobody dared double-cross her. Few even tried to trick her these days. Glory was the best of the best. And for the most part, it helped. Keeping busy, fighting other dragons. The challenge kept Glory alert and distracted her from the pain of missing her mother and living on the run as all Rainwings did. When the fighting didn't help, she could always find someone selling alcohol to pass time between jobs. Currently, she was sitting in a bar located between the Mud and Sky Kingdoms, doing exactly what Jambu had told her to stop doing. Drinking before a job. It had promised to be simple, though, and Glory wasn't in the mood to listen to her brother's nagging, so she was doing it anyways. Someone wanted her to take out a local gang lord, some two-bit mudwing thug. Glory was going to sit invisible on his roof and drip venom in his eyes while he walked inside. She could do it in her sleep. The door slammed and a dull, rust-colored skywing walked in. He looked around for a moment before his eyes settled on Glory and he glared. Glory sighed despondently. Jambu could always pick her out of a crowd, no matter how many times she changed her disguise. Come on, he growled, stomping over to her and grabbing her shoulder. He started pulling her towards the door. Glory didn't fight him. She had to be moving on in an hour or so anyways, so what was the point? I thought you said you had another job tonight, Jambu hissed as they walked. Yep, Glory said listlessly. Jambu was silent, clearly waiting for her to say something else. Eventually, he huffed and rolled his eyes. You're a mess, he snapped, though Glory could hear the undertone of concern. Glory spun abruptly. I'll see you in the morning, she said, and went invisible. Jambu glared after her, but she didn't know how long he watched the empty air. She didn't look back. It was sheer, unfortunate luck that the Mudwing took so long to come home that night. Glory lazed on top of his hut, patience unfaltering as she waited. She was a professional, after all. Finally, he came into view. 
Gloria extended her neck, tongue flicking along her fangs as she waited. Moments before he came within range, a sharp silver throwing star sliced along the side of his neck. The mudwing shouted as he dropped, twitching to the ground. Gloria shot up. That throwing star had come from the tree line. Still invisible, she shot towards the trees. A shadowy dragon was fleeing into them, moving fast and quietly. Glory was faster and invisible. She slammed into the dragon, pinning him to the ground and getting a good look at his scales before she killed him for robbing her of her prize. Glory froze, scales half visible. The dragon underneath her was a nightwing. Hi, he grinned, like an idiot, and not like someone who is being pinned down by the literal stuff of nightmares. What are you doing out here? Glory demanded in shock. Your job, apparently, he laughed. Glory snarled. Not for long, she said, fangs coming out. And then, suddenly, there was a sharp pain in her ribs, and the nightwing was twisting out from under her and escaping. Her vision went dark. The last thing Glory saw before she blacked out was the nightwing rolling to his talons and taking off. After that, Glory could admit she got a little... obsessed. Nobody had drawn her blood in ages. This Nightwing had managed to stab her with a poison knife and escape her. Not only that, she was pretty sure he was playing with her. Over the next six months, he showed up at three of her other jobs, always swooping in to snag the Glory and the money before she could. It was infuriating. She couldn't catch him, could barely even catch sight of him. Glory knew Jambu was finding the entire situation hilarious. Every time she returned to whatever hole they were calling home at the moment, fuming, Jambu would chuckle and ask what the Nightwing had done this time. She didn't even know his name for Moon's sake. It was driving her a little crazy, and she knew it. So that winter, when she was in the middle of a high-risk, high-reward job, when she saw the flash of black scales, she dropped what she was doing and hurried to follow that dragon. He was good, of course she already knew that, but it was different to see the Nightwing in action. He was following her target, nearly invisible in the rocky, barren land between the ice and sand kingdoms. He hadn't seen or noticed her yet, though, so Glory was taking the chance to observe his technique. Before she killed him, of course. The camp of twenty guards surprised Glory as much as they surprised the Nightwing. That had definitely not been in the information packet. Unfortunately, unlike her, the Black Dragon couldn't go invisible. He put up a good fight, but the Icewing soldiers captured him, dragging him deeper into camp and out of her sight. Well, that was that. The cocky little prankster had met his match. Glory made to finish the job herself, then paused. She'd been squaring off with this dragon for six months now. The two of them had been playing, almost, even though they were stealing jobs from each other. And, well, he was a very good assassin. It was a shame to let him get executed by some random ice wings. Moons, Chambu was going to make fun of her forever for this... Glory changed her scales to a shimmery white, copying the commander she was supposed to assassinate, and marched into the Icewing camp. She rescued the Nightwing flawlessly, and it would have been fine, but the real commander happened to return to camp early, so Glory was forced to kill him in the middle of camp, take the Nightwing, and run for it. They had drugged him with something, leaving the dragon slow and dizzy, so Glory just kept a talon on him to haul him in the right direction. They managed to escape in the confusion, if only barely. But... It was kind of fun, since Glory hadn't gotten hurt, anyways. The Nightwing passed out somewhere in the desert, and Glory left him be, settling in to wait until he woke up. She wanted answers, who he was and why he was messing with her all the time. Then she could decide what to do with him. Deathbringer blinked himself awake, head still pounding with whatever the Nightwings had drugged him with. There was rough sand under his claws. He curled them, feeling at the texture as he stretched. Finally, someone snapped, and Deathbringer froze. He looked up. He was in the desert, with no ice wings in sight. Only... a rainwing. He grinned, unable to stop himself. The rainwing slapped him in the snout. Hey! he shouted, indignantly, headache bursting at the contact. The rainwing hunched her wings, huffing. You're an idiot, she informed him. Deathbringer grinned again, then dodged when she tried to smack him. Hey, try words, he demanded. Don't just hit me. Why have you been sabotaging my job, she demanded, jumping to her feet and pacing. She was long and elegant. This was the first good look Deathbringer was getting of her. I wanted your attention, he admitted. Is it working? She rolled her eyes. Yeah, in the wrong way, she said. 
I'm about to kill you. No, you're not, Deathbringer said. She narrowed her eyes. And why is that? Because you just saved me, he said. And because I bet you want to know what I have to tell you about the Nightwings and your rainforest. She froze, eyes going to him sharply. What about the rainforest, she said. Hi, my name's Deathbringer, he replied, smiling stupidly and holding out a talon. She hissed, lashing her tail. Glory, she huffed sulkily. You have somewhere we can go, he asked. Because this is, uh, going to take a while. Against her better judgment, Glory allowed the Nightwing, Deathbringer, to follow her home. He talked the entire way. On the bright side, he'd get along with Jambu just fine. Once they were home and she'd gotten her brother to stop teasing her, she heard what Deathbringer had to say. There's a stone, he said, called Skyfire. He reached into a small pouch on his wrist, one of many, and pulled out a small, porous black stone. He set it on the table. It blocks Nightwing powers. They can't read your mind, they can't see you in their future. Glory gaped at him. What? Why would he reveal that kind of secret to her? His smile, for once, wasn't stupid. This was a weary grin, more a grimace than anything. You want to know why, he said. Yeah, Glory replied. This had to be some kind of trick. Deathbringer looked to the side. It's a long story, and I already have so much to tell you. Other things about the Nightwings, they... We've waited two thousand years, Glory said dryly. I've got plenty of time. The Nightwings will keep. Deathbringer swallowed, shifting back. Then, I guess, he said. And that's where we'll stop. This took so long to write. I legitimately wrote like six versions and I wrote and rewrote and scrapped so much I can barely remember what made it into the story and what didn't. So if it seems a little disjointed in places, that's why. Anyways, Glory and Deathbringer are going to fall in love and take over the rainforest. Fun times! If y'all enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe for more like it and check out my other what ifs. Drop a like or a comment if you have the chance. Thanks so much for watching and please have a wonderful day.